Okay, so all the viewports are in, um, done, and I've had to do I had to do quite a bit of uh, sanding just to sort of uh, take off the spatter because this wire was really spattery. But anyway, those are all complete. Wait a second. Right, so those are all completely done. So now what I'm going to do is start drilling um, some of the, the new, the next holes. Uh, I'm not going to put weld the stuff in until, I'm just going to drill all the holes and then weld everything in in one go. Um, so I'm going to drill, there's one to go there and the same on the back, which is for the main ballast tank vents. I've got the vents for the variable tank to go in and the fill uh, vents for the variable tank and then the, the only other thing I think to go in after that actually no there's a couple of others but the, the biggest one that I'm not sure of what sure of is the one for the motors because I haven't actually decided what motors I'm going to get yet because uh, people are doing a little bit of experimentation with them at the moment so there's quite a lot of, of movement on motor uh, motor progress so I'm sort of waiting to see what what I think is the best idea um, right let's get on with it so I've literally just taken delivery of this uh, put the light on I just want to have a quick look. So we're upside down here. I just wanted to check that all the pieces were here, which they are. You can see the uh, disc that I asked them to tack on onto the inside and that's just to hold the shape so that can be cut out afterwards. That's so that when I weld everything together it's uh, this there as a, as a support. First thing I'm doing is I'm just degreasing it actually because it uh, um, it's really slimy from where the uh, they did the MDT. So I've left my microphone at home, so just have to have it old school. But uh, I'm just going to mark these out now. a bit of time doing that actually because uh, well because they've got to be right obviously so there they are and now I'm gonna cut them out okay I've rigged the plasma cutter up I'm at 55 amps 60 psi uh, let's do it Gonna put the tackle on. I think I'll put the camera outside.
Right. So what I'm doing is uh, I need to cut these other holes. I've kind of updated this drawing and I need to start cutting the holes for the um, variable tank, the hard tank and the bladder tank, which I'll show you on CAD. Of course, this means I've got to do a whole load of grinding now, which I don't think I can really face at the moment. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to give it a bit of a token clean up and then I'm going to make a start on the next viewport because I've only got three. a trial fit absolutely no point in doing this whatsoever other than uh, seeing what it looks like and then how did I get it up here I oafed it onto the chair and then on there and I wiggled it up and now I've got to get it off It'd be nice to sit inside and see what it would be like because uh, well, I can't because there's this plate in the way but... So I've got the next blank for the final viewport. Um, that was because I put those two extra ones in. Anyway, um, I've got to go and put the hydraulic pump motor back on the boat. So I'm just going to get this chucked up and uh, make a start on it. Right, so this is what I was showing um, on the, the CAD drawing. Um, what I was actually showing was the position of the, the next holes that I need to drill. Um, and that's for the variable ballast tank system. And I've got two ideas for this. I'm not quite sure which one to go for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the holes in for both ideas. So idea one is a hard tank system, one at the bow one at the stern and it's quite simple um let me get rid of that it's quite simple um there's just a literally a vent or sorry an inlet valve there so that will let water into this tank and then there's a vent there to let air out and there'll be a high pressure uh, blow valve in there as well which i haven't actually shown but the way that this works is if i just edit this you can see on the inside the the pipe goes down to the bottom of the tank like that and that's exactly how it's done on the the k350 actually to get the water out from the bottom and the next idea is um is is using a bladder that's actually um using a, a high pressure pump to get the water out which is actually this one here. Uh, this is the one I'm thinking of by Sarum Hydraulics, not sponsored, I'm afraid. Pump is very expensive. That's one of the downfalls with this. Anyway, um, they sent me uh, their CAD drawing of this, so I didn't have to model it up, and I've then put that into my own drawing. This is just an example of how it, how it could be, just to show how it works. So there'll be an inlet valve there, which will let water into this flexible bladder of some sort. Um, so this is all low pressure now. So you're basically just letting water into the hull, um, and then close the valve, and then this high pressure pump will suck the water out of the bladder and pump it out of this uh, outlet pipe. Um, the good thing with this is that it's quite flexible. So this could all be flexible um, tubing. So this bladder could could be sort of moved, moved around or put anywhere or tucked under the seat or something. Um, and it's really, really simple. The 
problem with it is one that the pump itself is quite big you wouldn't need to have this big long handle um, or, or you would carry the handle for high pressure but for lower pressure stuff you could have a shorter handle so that would be be more convenient but the the other thing is that the pump is very expensive now i know there are different ones that you can get but this one's been tried and tested by one of the other guys in the in the club so we know it's a good pump and it's all um corrosion resistant so i'm gonna i'm gonna fit all the the fittings and then i can decide which one i want to use Nearly there, I think. Just a little bit more to go. I could slice my finger out as well. 